Hi and welcome to Everyday Vlogging with Rich Bassini. Today is March 21st, 2019. Thank you for tuning in. I just want to start off by saying thank you to all the new subscribers who recently subscribed to my channel. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you like the content and you come back for more. Today I want to do the reseller news, so let's get right to it. Okay, before I start, I just want to start off by saying to the new subscribers that I do not read everything verbatim. I will give you the URL and tell you the company where I got the information from and the rest is up to you if you'd like to pick up where I left off. The first story is from eCommerce Bytes and I want to give you the URL for that just in case you would like to check it out. It's www.ecommercebytes.com and the remainder of Windows will be from the same company so I will not be repeating it. However, I will be throwing dates out there so you know the information is not old. Let's begin. eBay, it just one count March 18th, 2019. It says eBay says Photo the photograph of tampered return is not evidence. And it goes on to say somebody who called into, or I should say wrote into Ina. For those who don't know, Ina Steiner is the owner of e-commerce bytes. And this person who wrote it is either a buyer or a seller. And it goes on to say, Dear Ina, I am trying to figure out the proper way to handle a return on eBay. When the buyer sent back a different item, I sold an electronic cooker that the buyer claimed was not working. They sent the item back, and when I got it, I noticed the serial, that the serial number had been cut on the back and it had been opened up. All the factory stickers were missing. I posted the image on, on the return case. I called eBay and told them that I had received a different tampered item in about an hour on the phone and speaking with different supervisors. I was told there was no proof, there was not proof that the buyer switched or messed with the item. Even with the pictures, they said that since the, they, they, they put a tracking number on it and it was confirmed, delivered, and that I was not uh, that I would have to accept the return. Um, this makes no sense to me. eBay said that they can't use pictures as proof. What else can you use? They said I need to get to message the buyer and get them to admit they switched or tampered with the item. I'm sure the buyer is going to be uh, tons of help, <laughs> Greg. Now uh, this story kind of like gets you know it leads into another story I would like to share with you guys really quick. Um, I was on uh, YouTube the other day and I was doing some eBay, you know, some research on eBay and I wanted to find out about people, you know, getting scammed and stuff like that. So, of course, when you go on YouTube and you type in uh, eBay scams, you're going to get a whole bunch of different people coming up there, tell you what they got scammed out of and so on and so forth. This particular one, I'm not going to get into the person's, um, you know, uh, YouTube channel, but uh, he's an eBay seller, no doubt. And he claims he loves eBay. And I think a lot of people have a love-hate relationship with eBay. But that's, we all do. I do too. <laughs> but what happened was, just to expand a little on his situation, he had sold, uh, I think it was a Samsung VCR. And he tested it out. And he said, you know, he went through the whole spiel. And I tested it out. I checked it out. It worked and everything and so on and so forth. And that when he sent it to the buyer, the buyer received it and said it did not work. Therefore, the buyer opened up a return case and wanted to send it back. And with that, uh, going, you know, with a long story short, the person sent it back, but the VCR that was sent back was not the same brand, and it wasn't working. And the gentleman uh, goes on to, you know, like I said, he's doing this within his eBay, uh, you know, within the YouTube channel. He shows you that he's calling up uh, eBay, and he's talking to the teammate, he explains the situation, and so on and so forth. And he told them that the one they received was not the right one and that eBay had to investigate in order to, I guess, uh, release his funds, you know, credit him back. Now, he did say that when he messaged the buyer saying, hey, what's up here? You sent me a different, uh, you know, uh, VCR. It's not the same one. It doesn't work. And the buyer admittedly said, oh, I sent you the wrong one or something like that. He admitted that he was wrong. And that, uh, but at that point, it was too late because the, um, the, the funds were released to the buyer in the buyer's favor because the way eBay looks at it is that well the person got it back and being they got it back they, it's showing that it was you know it was sent it was it was sent back so that's how they see it they don't know what's in the box so anyway long story short the guy gets on the phone he's calling up uh, you know eBay again he's talking to the teammate and he said they got to investigate we got to look into it and he's like well what are you going to look into it? he goes it's all there written in the messages he goes the buyer uh, admitted that they were, they were wrong they sent the wrong one back so. Uh, the story ended that he wasn't out of his money. He thought he was in the beginning. That if you first followed the story, you would think, oh, this guy got screwed out of the money, but he didn't. In the end, he says, well, 
uh, at the end of the video because I did end up making good. I got my money back, which is good. So that story had a happy ending to it. Now, in a situation like this here, when you get that, even with the pitches that it doesn't prove anything, according to them, eBay says, according to this, eBay says photograph of a tampered return is not evidence. Um, the, the, you know, if people to ask me, well, what would you do uh, in a case like this? Well, what can you do? Uh, if you're taking pictures of the item, uh, if you're selling something, unless it's brand spanking new, where you don't doesn't have to be moved from the box, take pictures left, right, up and down, sideways. That's what I do. When I take pictures, I take pictures of all four corners, top and bottom. <laughs> Um, if you could get in there, if you can get a serial number in there, or like a picture, you know, a picture of the serial number or the make and model, whatever, uh, use your macro lens on your camera, take the best pictures you can, and uh, you put in your description, uh, and you know, this way, you know, you have something to back you up. Now, in some cases, uh, eBay uh, will work with you. You know, I know there's a lot of people out there probably can't stand eBay. They hate them for this, that, and the other thing. And we all had our differences, indifferences with eBay's, uh, you know, with, when it comes to that. I don't fault the teammates because they have nothing to do with it. They're the foot soldiers. They get the brunt of all the discrepancies that goes on from sellers and buyers, you know. So you got to figure they're handling it all day long. Now, in most cases, uh, with a situation like that there, uh, it all depends. eBay does institute a seller protection and buyer's protection. Now, some people may beg to differ, saying, oh, they're all for the buyers. I've read that in many blog sites as well. Yeah, eBay don't care about the sellers. The sellers, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, I can't say that. I can't, uh, you know, attest to that there as far as, like, what those people are stating. But I could say for myself, honestly, and for those who do follow me, I tell it like it is. I don't sugarcoat anything. If somebody's wrong or if the company in this particular case is wrong, like if it was eBay and I had discrepancy with them, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to come out. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything and, you know, make and pamper the conversation up. If they're wrong, I'm going to say eBay's wrong. They did me wrong. I'm going to say it. I'm going to come out and be upfront and honest. Uh, but most of the time, uh, for the very few little instances I had with cases with buyers, uh, eBay was on my side and they did good by me. So I don't, you know, in some cases, you don't always experience the same situation or the same scenarios that other sellers are dealing with. But for me, I have to honestly say the teammates have been pretty good. They helped me out. And so is e eBay has been helpful to me. They were in my favor uh, uh, quite a few times. Okay. Uh, so like I said, I really can't. Uh, you know, you know, dwell on that topic as far as or expand too much on that as far as the customer service stuff. I, I think the the customer service to me, I think, is very good. In some cases, excellent because they answered all my questions and my needs as well. Uh, yes, have there times where I was a little upset with some with the teammates? Yeah, in some cases there might have been, but for the most part, I would say for the good majority of the time, I called them up. They were always able to help me out, so I have no problem there. But in regards to this here. That's the only suggestion I would say, you know, would, would say, even though you're saying, well, wait a minute, that's a contradiction. The eBay is saying the photographs ain't working, you know, it's not good. But, you know, who's to say? You know, I don't know. I mean, it all depends. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's what I would do. And, and one last little tip on this in regards to this part here. Um, when it comes to selling stuff like that there, um, if you feel it's an expensive item, maybe you might want to put insurance on it. You know, uh, maybe it got damaged during shipping. You know, maybe they, maybe they, maybe the thing did work for like if I, that guy who sold the VCR. Maybe it did work, and uh, maybe when a person got it, it was damaged. You know, I don't know. It all there's a lot of different scenarios with things like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we don't know. Once we hand the package to the United States, I do with the Postal Service exclusively. Once we hand the package off to them, what they do to it is their, it's their business. I mean, if it's dropped, mishandled, was that whatever, uh, there's nothing we could do about it, right? It, we're entrusting them to take care of it and make sure it gets to their destination safe and sound. But as far as this part goes here. Um, in regards to uh, photos, not it, it all depends, folks. Uh, what I could, all I could say is, unless you experience this the same scenario yourself, um, you know, look at it, just take it for face value, and uh, you know, look at it that way. This person apparently had this experience, and that's why they wrote in. Uh, it's it's sad to say if it, that is the case where they are in favor for the buyer, and uh, this the seller is uh, in some cases may be out uh, of the money. Uh, that's sad because, like I said again. Uh, eBay, you know, should look into things and take everything in perspective. You know, if the person saying uh, the item worked, it was in good working condition, and uh, you know it was, you got the pictures to prove it, uh, I would think that should be sufficient enough. But in this case here, it didn't seem like it worked for this gentleman. But anyway, uh, like I said again, we'll, we'll see where, you know, let, let's see what happens. I mean, I, I can't expand so much because it, it never actually happened to me. And I'm not saying it didn't happen to this person, but I never experienced a situation like that. Uh, that's that's all I could say at this point. But if you guys want to read more into it or whatever, uh, you know, you could check it out. I gave you the URL and the uh, you know the company we're dealing with here. Okay, so let's move right along here. 
Okay, eBay gives buyers greater flexibility when haggling. Now, this one here, I read the story a little early. This came out March 20th, 2019. I like this one in a sense for the simple reason. It, this, this, this did work for me, and I'm going to explain it a little bit. Um, it goes on to say eBay buyers are able to haggle with sellers through the best offer feature, and eBay announced Tuesday it will give buyers the ability to specify the expiration of their offer. We believe this change will increase the use of best offer and create additional sales opportunities for sellers that use it, eBay said. The expiration periods are 12, 24, and 48 hours will require a seller response prior to the uh, expiration in order for the transaction to remain valid. And then it goes on to say here, this will benefit buyers to help them make a decision on their purchases with shorter time frame and allow them to consider listings and otherwise have passed over. It further, explain, it further explained, because eBay is rolling out to a select group of buyers, as it prepares to launch the new feature, it is advised that sellers, they might uh, begin to see uh, offers with the short expiration periods. Now, the reason why I like this here, okay, now, I, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I tend to be sometimes a critic of certain things, but I have to honestly say, I like this, you know, this feature right here, folks, and for the simple reason is, eBay has a thing here where you could also, outside the best offer, you could also uh, send. You could also send an offer to the buyers. Now, the thing is, the only stipulation with that is you have to have sellers on it. Active, well, active sellers, uh, active watchers. So if you have, you know, two or more, whatever, uh, and you, you, and you know, when you go into your system, your summary, and then you think you go in seller activity. I think you go to sell, and then, uh, yeah, it's my summary, and then you go into activity, and then you look for sell, and then when you scroll down, you'll see another caption will be there, so sending offers to buyers. Um, I used it on two occasions, uh, and it worked for me. I got two sales out of it. So uh, I have to honestly say there's a lot of things I agree to disagree with when it comes to eBay with rolling out the new features. But I have to honestly say uh, using it, even though I only made the two sales, uh, it does work. It does work because uh, not, not long after I hit that, that send button to the buyer, um, I got a response back. As a matter of fact, one, one person responded, another person just hit the click button, you know, the buy it now button, it was done. And it was right after I made that uh, they offered to them. So I do like that feature. That feature is good. So um, if you guys never tried it, uh, check it out. And it, you'll, 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 it'll say send offer to buyers. That's what you're looking for. And, uh, you know, give a fair offer and you, you may make sales. I made a couple sales doing it that way. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that, I have to honestly say. Okay, so let's move right along. Okay, watch your wallet recurring, uh, recurring billing now mandatory on eBay. All right. Now, this story here, this was uh, posted on here March 18, 2019. It says eBay discussion boards are starting to light up with the comments from sellers who are longer, uh, no, who are no longer able to list fixed price listings with an expiration date. Three weeks ago, eBay gave a seller a heads up that it was making its all making all fixed price listings good to cancel GTC and implementing a recurring billing. GTC listings never expire instead they automatically renew every 30 days so the sellers have to be on the lookout for those recurring listing fees and must ma must manually end their listings if they wish uh, if they don't wish to renew through some sell although some sellers say they fear uh, eBay will penalize them for ending early listings now I just want to expand a little on this topic here after reading this here I did call up eBay and I went I spoke to a teammate and I asked that exact question I said listen I deal with the fixed listing, you know, fixed and buy it now uh, listings. I said, um, what happens in a case like that if I want to end it like the 28 day or the 29 day right before the 30 day expiration? He was told. He told me nothing happens. He said nothing will happen to you. You're not going to get a ding on your account. You're not going to. It's going to affect your seller performance. He said that everything should be good. He goes, there's no problem there. Because I said, can you confirm it? I said, I don't know if you could answer. He goes, he goes, no, I can answer your question. I said, okay. I said, I just want to make sure. Uh, the only thing he did say is, if you do have an active listing, and a buyer does make a, a purchase on it, and you cancel it, that will affect your seller performance because you cancel it with the buyer. It's still active on it, unless the buyer. Uh, manual, well, not manual. He contacts you through the eBay's message system and says, "I like to cancel the order." That's the only way. The way I understand it, you won't get a ding on your account, and you won't. It won't affect your seller performance. So, uh, in regards to that, there, 
uh, it, it, does, it's, it, it, it won't hurt your account if you end it on 30 days, you know, before the 30 days over. And if you don't, uh, you're going to be recurring <laughs> bills every month. So you may want to think about that there. Uh, if you're a person that says, oh, I don't care, I'll let it keep renew auto renewing, uh, you may have a big bill at the end of the year, <laughs> especially if you have items that have been laying around. I have stuff that's been laying around over a year. And believe me, on those items there, that adds up quick, okay? So anyway, I, I want to put that to rest as far as that part goes. Um, in regards to, uh, well, you will get penalized if any listens early. No, you won't. That's what the teammate told me now. So don't hold me to it. That's what the teammate told me. I gotta, like I said, as soon as I seen this article, I went right on the phone to call him up. I wanted to find out before I did this video. So I just want to let you guys know to give a little peace of mind. This is what they told me. Okay. So if you have a different experience, please don't message me or you want any nasty comments and say, you know, I listen to you watch the reseller news there and you're saying this, that, and the other thing, and I end up getting a ding in my account. This is what they told me. That's I'm only repeating what they said, folks. Honest. Okay. So let's uh, close this one out here. Now there's two stories that deal with Instagram, okay? And it deals with uh, now this one here, there's one that deals with PayPal. And, you know, with the, and the next story is with PayPal that it enables Instagram, right, you know, to make purchases. And this one here, so if you see it twice or it seems uh, familiar, it's because it's the same thing. You know, it's a different, same topic, basically, with different uh, video here, or web, I should say, uh, website. Uh, this one says over here, same company. Selling on Instagram now possible with checkout features was done March 19, 2019. Selling on Instagram now is, is now possible with the checkout feature announced today that let that lets shoppers pay for items directly in post. Uh, the checkout on Instagram feature is currently limited to U.S. shoppers from small number of bands uh, brands bands. Uh, if if and when the beta program is expanded, it's something uh, small sellers may embrace as already as they're already uh, using. Uh, social media sites to draw attention to their products. I know I do. I've been on Instagram now for eh, quite some time, not a long time, but uh, quite some time. And uh, I'm trying to get the word out there. You know, I throw little segues out there to my YouTube channel and my, my eBay listings. <laughs> uh, it says, note that Instagram was founded in 2010 and was acquired by Facebook in 2012. Well, we, are, we already knew that. Well, I think some of us knew about it. But uh, yeah, that's what's going on with that there. And um, I want to try to like keep this short and sweet. So let's bump out of here really quick. So you know the story with that. You know the uh, site. It's e-commerce bites. All right. So let's go last but not least. And here's another one that deals with an Instagram story. Again, this was posted March 19, 2019. It says PayPal enables Instagram's new shopping feature. Selling on Instagram is now possible with the help of PayPal. This is uh, this is the bond um, to be very welcome news for small sellers who chaff at the marketplace restrictions. Though now, the beta product is limited to small number of brands. See related story. And then it goes on to say here, where the PayPal separation from eBay in 2015 made the deal more palatable uh, to Instagram, it is certainly but operating, but operating agreements uh, between PayPal and eBay gradually allow the two companies to compete more directly until all restrictions are lifted when the agreements expire. Uh, that's pretty good news, too. I think that's really good news as far as that part goes. So uh, if you guys are out there that you do make your sales off of Instagram, I don't because I don't have, I don't really, I don't, I don't really list on there. I just basically tell you what I got and I just will, you know, uh, throw a little uh, segue out there on when, I'm, when I'm doing an Instagram video. So uh, that's pretty good news though, otherwise, right? Anyway, uh, let me bump out of here really quick here. Well, that concludes the reselling news. I hope you got a takeaway from it and if it was any help, Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. And if you want to be updated as to when I post new videos, please hit that bell notification icon. This is Rich Bassini signing off. Until next time, bye-bye.